we will be taking this time in our webinar to go over a few of the basics on what the Empowered to Serve Business Accelerator really is, why you should apply, what the benefits will be, and then also some time for Q&A at the end. So we will open it up to anyone who has questions at the end of the presentation. I first want to start off with um, really why the American Heart Association um, has started this program. And so really the AHA's mission is to be a relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives. And as part of this mission, um, we have a focus on health equity for all. So for just about five years now, the AHA has really shifted its focus on health equity through the emphasis and focus on the social determinants of health factors. Um, we know that the health of our population is really has shifted from just focusing on lifestyle and factors that have to do with your health, um, you know, whether you have high blood pressure or diabetes, but really that your zip code and where you live has a huge impact on your health. And so we have shifted really to trying to create a, an environment and the possibility for everyone to be able to lead a healthy life and to have access to the same kind of healthcare, to healthy food, um, to safe streets. So those are the social determinants of health that we have started um, to focus on over the last five years. And really with this pandemic, I think that most of us who work in the community can see that we have just put a light and we have enhanced our light on what we already know has been a problem. You know, our communities have been suffering and have not had the same access and this pandemic has shined a light on that. And we have always had a focus on that and we are so much stronger now and have such a relentless force to, um, you know, really focusing on that. Next slide. So just so you know, our team a little bit, I'll just ask um, our team to wave on the, on the, your screen when I call you out, but just so you know um, who the team is that um, is focused on the Business Accelerator. Pamela Garman Johnson is our VP and our executive lead. I am Michelle Raphael, and I am the Accelerator lead along with Arka Kaysen. Then we have Teresa Chambers, who is our communications lead. Natasha Johnson, also a communications lead. Krista Chambers Price, who is our consultant for the training, and Kelly Evans, who um, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but is part of the YWCA Chicago and will be helping us with additional training. The Empower to Serve Business Accelerator. If you're on this call, I think you kind of already know a little bit and the basics of what the accelerator is about. Um, but we'll just give you a little overview just in case um, you need a little refresher. We have um, had the Business Accelerator running. This is our fourth year. We have had both local and national events. Um, and basically what we do is we put a call out for applicants from social entrepreneurs, businesses, and organizations that have a focus on health impact. And we choose the top candidates to move on to an eight week MBA style accelerator process, which receives training from Krista Chambers Price and some other um, 
people who are great in their field to help you along with customer discovery, building out your business model, telling your business story, things that would normally cost you thousands of dollars. And we know that this is not something that you would want to use um, your minimal dollars right now, probably um, in your organization to focus on, but you're worth it. And it's something that will really help you and your business scale and make a bigger impact. So um, you, those finalists will move on to the business story finale, which will be um, virtual this year, but has been in person for the last three. And you will get the chance at grant funding. So in the past, we've had also in Philadelphia, we've had an HBCU focus, and we just finished one in Puerto Rico. As Michelle mentioned, we are excited that you are interested in being a part of our virtual coming National Business Accelerator. I'm going to talk a little bit about the why. So we have what we consider a very competitive incubator accelerator and what we do is support social entrepreneurs and organizations who are really driving change through health justice and their communities so we train and strive to train 150 um, firing community innovators to bring the nations to scale um, what we want to do is help increase the flow of capital to innovators serving within their communities and really grow a network of social change agents that are focused on improving health disparities. As Michelle mentioned, in the midst of the pandemic and the social and racial justice fights in our country right now that have to happen, we want to make sure that we are at the forefront because we know that your health truly is your wealth. And we also seek to enhance the diverse supplier base that exists in our country. So this is just a model of how the entrepreneurs feed into our mission at American Heart Association. So you are power to serve business entrepreneurs. What you're doing is building and scaling practice business models that address those social determinants of health, whether it's in housing, food security, safe places to work, play, pray, and live. And you're someone from our community, and that's the most important thing is that we are going to the community to seek solutions for the community instead of trying to build those ourselves. We are cultivating you all to become brand ambassadors so that our mission impact work can be done in a fair and equitable way so that we can revenue, uh, have generation of revenue for both your business as well as our organization and that that brand relevance really shines through so people know that you are a part of the mission of American Heart Association and as well that American Heart Association supports the work of your mission. So with that being said, I am going to toss it back to Michelle. And Michelle, just let me know when you're ready for me to start the video. So we just wanted to give you a little glimpse into what it's like when we have an accelerator live in person. Hopefully we'll all get back to that very, very soon. Um, but we wanted to just give you a little glimpse into what it's like to be a part of the accelerator. The Accelerator has been a great eye-opening experience. It's a chance to step back from yourself, step back from your organization, uh, look at your goals and your missions in a different light, and to reflect on what you're really doing. I never had a business background. I, I uh, started a nonprofit because I was passionate about food justice, food insecurity. Honestly, I was frustrated because I was trying to find someone or that group of someone's who was responsible for this problem and, and, and who should be doing something about it. But then I realized that I'm someone who wasn't doing something about this. This accelerator has been tremendous for us. To come together with multiple entrepreneurs on the same issue and I no longer feel alone. The business accelerator through the American Heart Association has taught me all the skills necessary uh, to develop a, a sustainable organization. 
Thank you so much, American Heart Association. This opportunity has been wonderful. This money is gonna to go towards developing the Sugax Watch and also developing a, a solution that better fits the lifestyles of diabetics. We've had the accelerator for four years now. We have provided over $500,000 in grant funding, and we have also trained over 70, um, I think we've trained about 75 social entrepreneurs. You can see some of the examples here, um, the link market, which you will hear about in just a few minutes, has been able to grow and expand and um, I'm not going to talk about that one because I want him to really focus on that. But Unite Us um, was a candidate in our first year, and they're based in New York. And since um, their participation in the Empower to Serve Business Accelerator, they have raised over $35 million. They have partnerships with Kaiser, CVS, They've been featured in Forbes, Times, Business Insider, Fast Company, and they are now nationwide and have actually um, opened up another office now in LA. That one is also a very good example. Um, it was a, an organization that has a volunteer fleet taking excess food from um, restaurants and from places um, instead of going to waste, they have the fleet go out of volunteers and bring them to places that need the food. And they have been able to expand to five cities and they will also be expanding to another five right after our accelerator. So she was really able to take um, what she learned from the process, expand her business model and really be able to hone in on telling her business story. But don't take it from me. Take it from someone who has actually gone through the process. Um, we will hand it over to Jeremy from The Link Market. So my name is Jeremy. I'm a surgeon and a social entrepreneur. Uh, and a few years ago, I founded The Link Market with the mission of restoring basic access to healthy, affordable food to folks who live in food deserts. So you've got to, to travel to get to a grocery store where uh, you live at or below the poverty line and where healthy, affordable food is it's just often not a reality, at least not an easily accessible one. And so uh, I'm thankful to have been a recipient of, of multiple grants, uh, but there was something unique about the opportunity that came with the American Heart Association's uh, Empower to, to Serve. Not only was it a, a grant competition, it was more of a, a business accelerator. And so, uh, whereas I thought I had most of the druthers of my, my, my organization, my company put together, uh, there was nothing like having someone scrutinize uh, the, the detail, the, the mission, the model uh, to put me through the paces to make sure that uh, I well understood our customer and uh, our, our call to action, and, and that process itself was invaluable. Uh, and then additionally, the, the networking opportunity that came with uh, the accelerator uh, was something that uh, we really could not have, we, we really underestimated uh, the, the true value of it. Uh, and, and now thinking about the relationships, the partnerships that have come uh, just from uh, that platform uh, continued to this day to, to benefit our organization and, and then certainly to the communities that we serve. So I, I can dig a little deeper into uh, what the grant competition or the, the accelerator meant for us going through it. Um, I wasn't the best participant, Krista can tell you that, because my, my surgical schedule sometimes <laughs> interfered, she, she's agreeing, uh, interfered with my ability to, to get some of the tasks completed in a timely fashion. Uh, but the intentionality was there, right? To, um, to complete all these assignments, to, to think about who our customer was, to uh, identify what our mission was and, and how to carry it out. Uh, I think most of us as social entrepreneurs already think about these things, but the act of putting it to paper and uh, to have it uh, scrutinized is all that more important, right? To do it uh, with a friendly audience who's already um, supportive of the work that you do, who gets um, where you're coming from and, and, and who you're trying to serve, you know, just really truly helping you uh, to better elucidate who that is so to, to the masses so that when you're on a platform like this one or, uh, or others, um, you're that much more prepared uh, to give the elevator pitch or to give that full-on deck presentation and maybe uh, get the deal done. When I got started as a medical student, I got the city to give me a bus. We turned that into a grocery store. 
Uh, and then when that wasn't enough, we got some grant funding to turn shipping containers into to grocery stores. And that's about the point at which I had submitted uh, our application for the, the Empower to, to Serve uh, Accelerator. Um, we had just had the, the shipping container stores going. Uh, we're looking to expand, and certainly the capital that came from the, the accelerator was, was the infusion that we needed to now get to our first brick-and-mortar grocery store. Um, and I, I remember distinctly after having uh, come in second place and, and shaking hands of, of people in the audience who were, who were congratulating us, uh, Dr. Robinson came up to, to me afterwards and said, I really like what you guys are doing. There's, there's someone in the Midwest that I think you need to, to meet. And so she and I ended up talking, and, and the end result is now that we're going to open a second brick-and-mortar grocery store a little bit later this year. Um, and because of those preliminary successes, uh, we're going to open a third one uh, this time next year. Um, and so our approach has been small scale, large impact, uh, now brick and mortar grocery stores in the heart of government subsidized housing projects. Um, and uh, true to the, the name of the business accelerator, um, the, uh, the process has exponentially accelerated the growth uh, of our organization to the point that we're now being uh, asked to consider uh, locations outside of the Midwest. You're amazing. I I don't know how you find the time in the day, but you do because you're, take <laughs> you're taking a stand and a stake um, for your community, and we really appreciate all your hard work. My pleasure. Thanks for your kind words. Thanks for joining. So just a few um, housekeeping items for those who are wondering should I apply? Can I apply? So a few of the guidelines. You need to be 18 years or older to apply. You must reside in the United States and your organization must have an impact in the United States. And you must be able to show a health impact. So that does not mean that you can't have some sort of innovation or um, some sort of organization that is not necessarily about health, but it has to have a health impact. So I hope that helps to clarify some questions you might have about your organization. And you also must not be under current litigation. So if you have a patent and your patent um, someone is, you're in current litigation on your patent or anything else, then you, there will be a part in the application process where you will need to divulge that so that we can be able to work with you. I am now going to pass it over to Krista Chambers Price, our brand story generator. Um, she is really the one who will be working with the top candidates in their training and telling of their business story. So I'm Krista Chambers Price, and I'll be the I am the lead facilitator for the um, for the accelerator. So I'm the one that helps you guys get through a series of exercises. And Jeremy, I did note your comment about putting you through the paces. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that later. But it's an opportunity for you to really. Um, take uh, the idea, the vision and inspiration that you want to bring out into the community and, um, and help you scale it. But also importantly, more importantly than helping you to scale it, this is an opportunity for you to actually go through the equivalent of an eight week stress test to see if you are ready to take on this, um, this concept and bring it into the community so that it has the impact that it must have, not can, not maybe, but must. Now here's where, and I'm, I'm so glad all of you are here because, and that interject, and I get to sense it through the, the chat window because we're in a time right now, y'all, where it is no joke. It's not playtime. Everyone must, it's all hands on deck. Y'all get that sense? Huh? We all have to bring all of our best talent into, into the world right now. So that means we have, we don't, there's not a lot of room to wonder or to question, we have to act. And 
before I get into what the accelerator actually covers, I'd like to acknowledge one person um, who is extremely important to um, why this accelerator exists, and that is Ms. Pamela Garm Johnson. Pamela, can you wave, please? Yes, let, 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 let me tell you something about uh, vision. Now, when she and I met, it was in Chicago, we were in the basement of some event, can't remember the event right now, but um, she had the vision to see the possibility, not just, oh, we have to put on another program. She knew because of the factors that prevent communities from getting healthy, she knew that business as usual would not do. And so when we first met, we met at a business storytelling event and we brought, she said, Why don't you, can you guys do this for us? This is back in 2017. Can you do a business storytelling event for us? I was like, yeah, sure. And we pulled it together. I think Pamela, Michelle, we had what, four weeks, maybe five weeks to pull it off. And there was 35,000 on the table for a grant. Now, from that moment, we, it, it hit a nerve. Um, and it's grown within four years to grants that have gone, that have been given out. It's over almost a half a million dollars, y'all. Pamela Johnson is the, the, the individual, the person, the visionary who said, you know what, if it's impossible, that's where the possible lives within her. And so I want, if everyone could just do a hands up or a, um, a high five on the um, chat, on the window, just say, you know what, thank you, Pamela Garman Johnson, because none of us would be here today if it weren't for her. So thank you for that. Now, a little bit about me. I've been in the marketing branding space for over 25 years. Um, before then, um, I was a uh, military intelligence um, army veteran, as well as a former FBI analyst. And those two qualities, what does that mean for y'all? That means y'all can't get away with nothing in this process because my job is to help you take your current brilliance and make it shine even brighter. And that means we have to go through a series of exercises that starts with you as the founder, because we can't lead by what we do anymore. And that's enough to compete. Because at the end of the day, anyone that goes through this process, whoever the top 10 are that, that makes it into this, um, into this program, every one of you are going to be winners. We're not going for the top one, we're going for the top 10 that are winners. Now, one or two may get grant dollars, but we want everyone to be winners in the community because here's what's awesome about this accelerator, you guys, and what makes it different than what's, what else is out there in the market, is that once the accelerator is done and over, it's not over. There's so many other ways in which you'll be a part of the AHA family and will be supported over the long term. So this really is just a, a, a wonderful opportunity for you to um, get clear about um, who you are and why you exist and why this brand must lead right now. So this eight week process is gonna be divided up um, by going through, starting with you first, your story, which is the critical um, part of this story that you're gonna be sharing with the audience later on. Why you exist, and what is his, how does history play into the context of why you're here today and why you're so committed to this concept. Um, weeks two and three, we're gonna focus on purpose and mission. Y'all hear Jeremy talk, start off with mission? Y'all hear that? Oh, my baby, I was so excited for you, like, oh. <sighs> and he was, he was amazing, y'all. I mean, yes, then he was a, um, a resident, right, Jeremy, Dr. Jeremy, right? And we would have our sessions literally with him going up and down an elevator because this time was so crazy. But, um, but purpose and mission, why are you here? Um, what's your North Star, you know? And what's the rocket that we have to build to help you get to that star, okay? Uh, weeks four and five, we're gonna go deep on customer discovery and the customer story, which is gonna include um, themes around psychographic um, evaluations, behavioral theories. Um, we're going to do, uh, you're going to go into the markets that you're serving and you're going to do learning launches where you actually get to really share with the community um, during this accelerator to get 
feedback so that we're not just, it's not just Krista said, or it's not just what the AHA said, it's what the community wants. And we know once we, once we put this idea out into the market, it's going to work. It has to work. Then in week, week six, um, this one's going to be probably the hardest for most of you to go through. Um, and this is where we actually take your brand and we tear it apart. We break it down. Um, and you're going to go through some design thinking um, theories to look at how do we iterate to innovation. In order to iterate to innovation, you've got to tear down what you have so you can build up the right um, model that's going to take you where, you, where that purpose and mission demands you to go. Um, but what, we'll, what you'll see with the images we'll show you later on and what you can see on the website, um, it's a process that entrepreneurs, they actually, even though it's hard, they love to do it because they have to get their, they get their hands into the meat of the brand story that they're, um, that's coming out of this experience. Then um, we'll, at that point, we'll be preparing for the presentation itself. So you're gonna look at your brand type. There's three different types of brands that are you know, um, extremely effective. You have your own brand type. You also have your own brand experience. And that experience has to, be, has to come through the story, but it's gonna be connected through what the customer wants, what the market wants, and what the product can deliver. So we're gonna start pulling it all together. And the really fun part about all this, you guys, is that because we're doing this virtual, see before we had the kind of limitations of a stage. Now there are no limitations. And we just did a, um, a presentation, the, the, the showcase night for Puerto Rico. And I think Eduardo, I think you're on as well, um, who's, who was there. And each of the candidates had to present a, a, a visual um, movie, mini movie of their brand story. And it was phenomenal. And these teams put this stuff together in two weeks. I think you guys are gonna have more like six to do yours. Um, but that's gonna be part of your, um, the work you're gonna be presenting to judges as well as to the general um, community. Um, you're gonna have access to some really great mentors. Um, we have um, a woman from uh, DC who is a former special, um, special agent with the FBI and also senior VP from the Bank of America. And she's gonna help you guys with some um, leadership development work. Um, we have a, a phenomenal attorney who also is someone who knows how to raise money not just little chump change, we're talking millions of dollars, but helping you to make sure that everything that we're doing along the, along the way through this process makes you investable. So you're gonna go through that. And you're gonna have throughout the process access to a cultural anthropologist. And the reason why that's important to have through this, this whole experience is that you have to know and understand not just how culture works, how culture is shaped, but how do you measure create the right measurement for um, determining, okay, are we capturing the right data in order to give us the right information in order to be successful? So, um, so that's, that's the accelerator wrapped up, all right? So any questions or do you want, want me to wait, Michelle? All right, next slide, please. So the art of storytelling. So the story, let me tell you something. The word pitch is, you're not gonna hear a lot of that. And there's a, there's a reason. There's a difference between pitching and, and storytelling. Pitching focuses on what you do. Storytelling focuses on who you are. If you want to get into the room, we, are, we, we want you to have a strong story so that you can walk into a room, walk into an opportunity, unlock that opportunity so you can do the pitch. Okay? Entrepreneurs are wired to pitch. We want to make sure that you have a solid story which is a blend of all the stuff I just went over that you're gonna be building through this accelerator. But we're gonna have fun with it, okay? Next slide. All right, so some of our past um, accelerator candidates have gone on to be recognized by some really interesting, I don't know, low rent kind of organizations. I don't know if you ever heard of CNN. Anyone here is CNN? Eh, it's just some small group, I don't know, but you know, uh, Maria, Ro uh, Maria Rose Belding, who was in our first accelerator in DC, I um, mean, she is just a rock star. And, and she is, was recognized the next, the very next year as, as a CNN hero. She, she was one of the top 10 winners. So there she is with Will Ferrell. 
Um, then you have next to her, um, we have um, Leah, and she, again, I think um, um, Michelle, you covered her briefly, but just yesterday, was it day before yesterday or yesterday, Michelle, where she shared that they have crossed rescuing 10 million pounds of food. When she started, when she went through the accelerator, what, two years ago, Pam, Michelle, it was, they were trying to cross 100,000, 100,000 pounds, 10 million pounds of food, incredible. So she's been recognized as fast um, in Fast Company this year. So um, I mean, and and there's there's other amazing um, accomplishments by these um, uh, these candidates. But what's consistent through all of them, whether they make you know national media or not, is that you know they walk away with a stronger connection to their purpose and their mission. So they can walk into any room and get what they need in order to succeed. All right, next. All right, this is from our last um, Accelerator. Um, and there's um, Andrew, yes, Andrew. Uh, we were in a, a barbershop. I think this was like five in the morning, which was fabulous. Um, but we highlight, he was one of our candidates from last year. Next slide. That, that was a, a media run through with uh, NBC, a local affiliate with NBC. So, um, and this is, you see Michelle in the back, you guys, in the red shirt, yeah. Um, Y'all gotta watch out for her, Michelle, yeah. Michelle's, she's the heavy. Like, you'll be working with me mostly, but Michelle's the heavy. So when she show up, we gotta ask, you know, sit up right and stuff. But anyway, this is a group lunch before, on the day of the showcase night. Look at everybody looking all happy and relaxed. Yeah, this was before we made, we went to the museum and we're at the Oprah Winfrey Theater. All right, next slide. This feels like I'm at a family reunion or something. Um, so, what's expected? And is that from you? Okay, what is expected from you? All right. We need for you guys to be um, committed to this process. We need for you to be um, ready to go deep. Because what's, what can't happen is if there's, in this process, there's no room to hide. There's no place to hide. In order for us to get down to, in order, in order for us to do what we need to do in eight weeks, everybody has to bring their A game. Yes, Jeremy is right. You, do, you will get put through the paces because the stakes are so high in our communities right now. We can't accept or do anything less. So your commitment, yes, um, your time. Um, we'd like to recommend that you, you know, carve out like six to 10 um, hours a week. Yeah, a week. And that's gonna get even tighter or even more the closer you get to the, um, the showcase night. But this allows you to consistently carve out time for yourself, because a lot of this is going to demand you to go deep for yourself and, and outside of the brand, outside of the product. Um, but then we also, I know you got other, you know, commitments. We get it. I will work with you. As I said earlier, Jeremy and I, we worked when he was going up and down elevators, okay, um, in between um, his calls. Um, we've, I've had... I don't recommend it, but I have had sessions at four in the morning because folks, that's when they were available. But once you're in, once you're in this process, basically I, you own me for 10 weeks. And that means I'm at your beck and call, but I need for you to do your part too. Um, there's digital work you'll, be, you'll receive um, through an online platform. There's a project um, management platform which should be a part of with the rest of the team so you can organize your time and see what assignments are coming, when it's due, um, and, um, and all of that. But those are the two biggest things we expect from you. What you can expect from us is our undying commitment to your success. Okay, we love the fact that you're here and we know that if you are here, that means you have amazing potential. And that means we're gonna bring our A game too. And it's not just me, it's Michelle, it's Arga, it's Pamela, it's everybody. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, everybody. As Krista said, part of this team is um, we really want to highlight this amazing opportunity that's coming from the YWCA Chicago. 
Kelly is on. You can see her lovely face. We have partnered with the YWCA for um, the first time. And what will um, be highlighted with her is that anybody who applies to the Business Accelerator, whether you make it or not, you will have the opportunity to receive business training from the YWCA. Um, we've really been working hard the past few years to try to find the best partner for this because we don't just want you to apply and then come back the next year and try to get through, but really to give everyone the opportunity to expand and scale and be able to get this training that you're worthy of. So thank you so much to the YWCA for that. And so make sure that you apply because some people won't apply thinking, oh, I won't, you know, I'm too small or I'm just starting out. But anybody who applies, will um, be able to get this opportunity from the YWCA SB um, DC. So down to the nitty gritty on the timeline. Many of you might have seen that the application is due next week, but because of this amazing opportunity that we've been able to sign with the YWCA, we are allowing for another four weeks on top of the one week left. So you have five more weeks, but don't take that time lightly. Don't make it a last minute application. Email us with questions, print out the application, work on it offline, and then come on and type out your application. It is short, it is easy, and I will, I'll talk a little bit about what we're looking for in the next slide, but just take this opportunity to apply by August 31st. So after this, we will take the month of September to review the applications and come up with our top accelerator candidates. On October 1st, we will announce our finalists on the Empowered to Serve Business Accelerator page. On October 12th, you will start your pre-accelerator training, which is a one-week online training period with Krista. And this is an opportunity for you to kind of get a glimpse into the time commitment that you will have to have. And you have the ability to say, this isn't for me. And that's really what the pre-accelerator training piece is for. Um, people have dropped out every single year and we always have alternates. And this is your opportunity to, to see if you really wanna be in it. And then October 19th, those that continue will go into the eight week accelerator training process. December um, 11th, so October 19th to December 11th, you'll have the training. And then during December to January, you will be working on completing those videos that Krista talked about since we won't be in person. Um, you will work on videos of your expo, which is kind of like when in person we would have a table and you could talk to the participants and to the judges and really expand on providing business type information because that will not be a part of your business story. You will only be able to talk about who you are and your health impact during your business story. And Krista will work on the business story with you as well during that time period. And then the virtual finale event will be in January, which we just found out some very exciting news that Matthew Knowles will be a judge, a celebrity judge um, during the virtual finale event. So bring your A game. So when you are filling out your application, we are for sure, for sure looking at you being able to show that you have a health impact. So whether that's being able to show numbers, qualitative, quantitative, that is very important to us. Are you innovative? Are you just another um, community garden or have you taken it to the next level? What makes you different? What makes you stand out? We need to know that. 
Um, do you have a business model? It's okay. We do take startups. We do take idea phases, but you need to be able to show what will come out of that. You need to have a plan. And of course, Krista will be working on modifying that and honing in on that, but we just need to see that um, you're on your way there. And then will you benefit from the business training and also from the grant? So do we see that you are in a position where you need us and we need you and can we help you? Um, will a grant, a, you know, that's not in the million dollar range actually help you? Are you too big for this? Are you too small for this? We need to see that the training and the grant will actually be beneficial. So those are just some things that you should think about when you're applying. And of course, empoweredtoserve.org slash apply. We would love to open up the next 12 minutes for questions. So will I be able to revise my application? Unfortunately, we cannot save the application. So once you submit, that's the application that we'll be taking. Not really. <laughs> so that's why we're saying print out the application first, work on it, and then go on and submit. Great question. For organizations, is the training only for one designated person or more than one person? Amazing question. So first off, if you are applying, you should either be the CEO or founder or lead for the organization because you will be making changes. So if you don't have that capacity and that leadership ability, or someone has given you the go ahead to make those changes, then you should not be the one in the training. Um, it needs to be the person who has the decision-making process in your organization. Um, and yes, only one person will be trained. However, during the expo, if you have a partner or you have someone who works with you, they can help with the expo but they cannot, they cannot be part of the training and they will not be presenting the business story. If you have a partner that you're, you're really close to and you're like, you guys like peanut butter and jelly, um, we want to we wanna start off by working with the person who actually came up with the concept in the first place, who had the spark, who had the idea, even though you might be close to someone else, it's that person who has to, who builds the foundation for the brand story itself. So that's only one person, but the rest of the team can be, can come in later on as Michelle described. So someone asked, can other SBDCs be used? So our partnership right now is um, with Kelly in Chicago. And so that is who will be um, partnering with us for the training. Okay. Um, I submitted a couple of months ago. How can I get a copy or to print it? If you just want to email me, I'm happy to send you the application we received because we don't really have a back end since it's a job form, um, but I'm happy to send it to you if you need that. My organization focuses on community projects that make a health impact either through workshops, health fairs, or activities. Should we apply? Of course. And again, remember, even if you're not the exact fit, you're still going to get the opportunity to get this training. So apply, 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 even if you don't know if you're a great fit. But yes, um, organizations that are focused on community project and health impact, thumbs up. Is it a PDF submission or form submission? So we have provided a PDF for you to be able to print out because you cannot save the application once you start on it. We provide it to print out just in case you want to work on it with other team members or you want to take time to work on it um, over a couple of days or, you know, collaboratively, that's fine. But then you have to come back on and fill it out on the web page. It is a jot form. So you're filling it out, doing the drop downs and then clicking submit. And once you submit, you, you can't go back. So that's why we've provided that PDF. Do you offer a review of the application prior to submission? 
Unfortunately, we don't. Um, we usually have hundreds of applications, and so we don't, we can't focus on um, providing you with any sort of help in that area. Um, you're welcome to email us with questions. We're happy to answer, but we really want to try to keep a level playing field. So we usually don't review or provide feedback or take calls um, because you might get a different kind of response than somebody else or time commitment from us. And we really want everyone to have the same opportunity. So make sure you really are thoughtful and planned out in terms of your responses to the questions so that we can really understand what you are applying with. And you also don't forget, it's not mandatory, but I would say it really does help to submit a video of yourself. So that is in the application. Submit a video on YouTube of yourself with anything you want to talk about on your business. We want to get to know you through this video. We don't need a, a production. We literally need you, your face in the camera like we are now just talking to us so we can get a little bit more personality to your application. So please, please consider doing the video. Quickly, Michelle, I'm just going to interject. Yeah. Michelle has said a couple of times, please feel free to email us with questions. You can email us at empowered to serve um, at heart.org. And we'll put that up on the screen as well. We have to show evidence for our health impact numbers, et cetera, when we apply, or can we show our potential for future impact? Definitely, you can do both. If you have um, those health impact numbers, um, qualitative, quantitative data, that will help. We definitely want that if you have it. But we also understand, um, you know, our first place finalist from last year, he was a 19-year-old who has type 2 diabetes, and he needed a new way to test his glucose without being embarrassed of having it in his pocket or forgetting it. And so he invented a watch and it's in production, you know, like he's still working on it. Um, and so he really talked about what is the market for this? Who, how many people need this? Um, how could it improve the health of people with diabetes? Um, so if you are in the stage where you don't have those numbers, that's okay, but you do have to explain what the future impact will be. Do you review how the grant dollars work? Do they come after the training? So the grant dollars, um, they will only go to the first and second place finalists. We will also have a fan favorite, which I'll touch upon in a second, but the first and second place finalists will be um, designated and awarded by the judges during the finale event in January. So let's say you, we usually have about eight to 10 people go on to the finale. You will tell your business story and then the judges will deliberate on who the grant finalists will be. And then you will receive the grant funding after that. We will also have a fan favorite which will be voted on by anyone who comes on to our um, virtual event. So that will be an opportunity for you to get all your friends and family to vote for you. And there will be a small grant for that. I'll be applying as a startup. How difficult will it be to be actually acquire the ability to be accepted into the program? So based on what I said with our grant finalist from last year, there's a possibility. It just depends on you and what you're able to um, to show us and to sh and to um, how you're able to tell your business story um, and what you're able to project. So definitely apply. It's a possibility. Financials be reviewed. No. So you'll you'll be able to provide some of that information during your expo if you would like to, but we are really focused on business story and not a pitch, traditional pitch competition um, where you're going to be um, 
reviewed based on your financials. When we get the recording, we will have it up on the website um, probably early next week. In addition to brand strategy, do you also help develop marketing strategy, pricing strategy, and partnerships for business development? Krista? Um, we help you, we'll give you a good um, running start for that because we have a lot to cover in a short period of time. Um, but yeah, certainly uh, we'll help you get primed and positioned for all of those. Um, my organization is a newly formed nonprofit, do not have a website. Is this needed to apply? No, you don't have to have a website. The process will actually really help you um, to get your ideas on what your website should look like. What documents do you need for a startup to submit with the application? So we actually don't ask for any documents. We just ask you to fill out the application. Another finance question. The application asks for website and social media followings. Should we still apply if we don't have those? Yes, you will need to document how you spend the dollars. Um, your grant funding will go towards health impact. So that is a great point, Pamela. Your, um, your grant funding cannot go towards things that don't have a health impact. So you can't put it towards a new coffee machine or a new printer or things like that, but it does need to go specifically to something that will have a health impact. And we will talk more about that if you make it to the, um, to the top candidate. Does the PDF include specific word counts or character counts on the form? I don't believe so. Will you be sending out the application info in an email? Um, e no, because we don't have everyone's email, but I think when you signed up for the webinar, we got your email. So we, you can just go to the application page, which is empoweredtoserve.org slash apply. Will there be a recording of the Zoom meeting? Yes, it will be on the website. Um, I submitted an application without a video. Is there any way to still add? Sure, you can email it to us and we can make sure to keep it with your application. So empowered to serve at heart.org. Am I able to submit for another company that I own? Um, if that's a question, whether you can submit twice, we don't encourage it, but it's not that you can't do it. Um, we've had people apply with different organizations, but I would encourage you to really focus on the organization that has um, the most impact and which you think will be the best to go through the training. So I am just, we are at time guys. Thank you all so much. Uh, we are so excited that you have so many great questions. Please do not hesitate to email them to us at empowered to serve at heart.org. And thank you again for your time today, Michelle, Krista, Pamela and Natasha, thank you. And a huge thank you to Francesca Martinez and Katie Bond for helping us get all the behind the scenes done. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone.